My boy, Joe Coy, just hosted the Golden Globes. Mm. A lot of uh, reactivity online. Mm -hmm. Joe, not very proud of his performance. Mm -hmm. Did you see him on Good Morning America? No. And they were asking him about it? I read some of his comments. I don't know. I yeah, not one. very happy about it. Mm. Thoughts on the whole thing? Did you guys, we all watched yeah, it. Yeah, we watched it. So. Yeah. I mean, tough. To take it on 10 days for that audience is like it's kind of a nightmare situation. Also, following arguably the best version of that ever. Yeah, Ricky's killing oh, yeah. it. Ricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the expectation. Okay, um, Al, thoughts? I don't know why any comedian wants to do that role. So that's an interesting one right there, too. Like, it's an incredibly difficult... Uh, job to win at. Mm. You're performing in front of quite possibly the worst crowd to perform in front of, meaning everybody there is already pretty self-absorbed. I mean, they're actors, mm. right? Or filmmakers. Uh, they're artists. Artists, we are self-absorbed. Like, we're part of this ilk. Not only that, they're acutely aware that the cameras are on them. So, Timothy Chalamet and uh, the the Jenner girl, Kylie, yeah. Kylie Jenner, having this moment where she's fixing a tie. That both of them know that there's a camera right here, <laughs> and they're playing up how cute they could possibly. Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez and the other girl gossiping all together, <laughs> but they know everybody is everybody is aware that the yeah. camera's on them. Nothing's candid about the situation at all. So they're not. You you have to snap them out of their own head, which is I'm being watched. Mm. We've all had a conversation in front of cameras, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever had one where like, it's like, for example, an interview right after a fight or something like that, where the camera is a guy holding it right here, and mm. then the interviewer is trying to have like a normal conversation with you? Or like <laughs> vloggers will do this. Yeah, yeah. there's a like, giant light on the shit. <laughs> I remember the first time, I think it was, uh, it was Mike Malak came over. Mike and Logan came over for, it was like a Super Bowl. This is when we were back in Miami. And he started having a normal conversation while his buddy was like filming. And I and I was like, what's going on right now? And then I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is what vlogging is essentially. When we're doing it on the road, it feels less uncomfortable because we're talking to the camera guy. Yeah, it's intentional. Shifty, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paula, hey. But this was, what I'm saying is it creates a very uncomfortable environment, mm -hmm. okay? Now, how do you win in that room? What did fucking Ricky do so well? He opens up by saying, I don't want to be here. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about this. I literally don't. I have my beer, half drink up here. This is not a big deal for me. And then he patronizingly says, guys, these are jokes. I know you're self-absorbed actors that take yourselves way too seriously, but these are jokes. So he's already going, we're at school. You guys are the children. Yeah. And, and we he believe, does. Sorry, we believe him when he says it. And we believe him when he says it. And he don't got to give a fuck. Yep. He made all the money. Mm -hmm. He got the hit shows. He got the huge tour. He got, and he goes out there and he doesn't give a fuck, which is intoxicating to people in Hollywood because they give so much of a fuck. They want it so badly. Especially on that night. That it's, night they're auditioning for their next movie yeah. and their next movie after that. And there's an award on the line and their clients have an award and everyone's thinking about that. They've worked their whole life for this. They're not worried about your stupid little jokes. They're like, get it out of the way. Did I win? Did I win? Did I win? Or the, did the movie I'm in win and then I can get this other thing? They're trying to schmooze with a director that they might have had a connection with. They're like, ooh, when that director goes to the bathroom, I'm also going to the bathroom and I'm gonna go meet him and my agent's gonna, they're, the whole thing I'm imagining is this, 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 this networking moment that they believe is gonna change their whole fucking lives. Nightmare. <laughs> Dub would love that shit. Oh, he's, he's, he's a master, he'd Dub be a master. Would love that, that just sounds like that. So, what Ricky did great was he goes, all of you guys care about this? I don't give a fuck. And y'all know I don't have to give a fuck. Mm. And I'm going to make fun of your asses. And when you don't react, I don't give a fuck equally. Mm. And if you watch that, he doesn't care when the jokes don't get the reaction that they do deserve. The jokes are great. Yeah. And I think what happened with Joe is, and even from Joe coming on the pod and talking about it, I think he really did care. Yeah, it's it was awesome. an, And he talked about it. It was an important moment for him and his family and everything that he worked for and everything he came from to be there for that moment. Mm -hmm. And then when he started to get maybe the reaction that most, most, hoped, most, most hosts get, I think it rattled him a little bit mm -hmm. because it wasn't 
the massive last that he's used to. Yeah, he's used to killing in an arena. Yeah. Exactly. Where it's just, whereas Ricky's like, I know what this fucking room is going to be. I know that they're going to groan. Yeah. I know that they're going to be pussies. And then eventually I'm going to bowl them. It's also the fourth time Ricky hosted? Fifth time? Fourth or fifth, yeah. Mm. So, and I think that he reacted to that lack of reaction. You could tell that he really wanted to win and succeed in that moment. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ricky wanted to, it felt like he wanted to troll him a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best position to be in as the host. You got to want to make him groan. You got to want to make him uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's the win. It's almost for us as an audience, we like to see them squirm. We want to see the close-up of Tom Hanks, which we all love, feeling a little uncomfortable yeah. about a joke. Yeah. We fucking love that. Yeah. And um, along with just, you know, you got to have like amazing jokes that yeah. let them know you don't care if they like you or not. Mm -hmm. And they react like, to that. That's the big thing. Like you got to not want to be in Hollywood because those jokes actually might cut deep and somebody be like, yo, fuck that guy. You forever. making fun of this director and he's like, all right, well, you don't need to be in my movies yeah, anymore. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, the guy who goes, I don't care if I'm in your movies or not. <laughs> yeah. That director's gonna go, I kind of want to work with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I yeah. yeah. I think you either need that if you're a comic or you just get like a TV dude that's like a regular kind of milk toast host that's yeah. gonna like make some cutesy jokes and to just let it be that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah that's not gonna slap. And no, it, but, and, it, but if and, you're a TV guy, you don't need to necessarily be funny. You just need to, like, make a fun environment. You know oh, what I'm saying? okay. Yeah. You can do it with music. They, I think they did that once with the Oxers. There was, like, a lot of songs or something. Mm -hmm. like, like a Seacrest? Like, yeah, give me type, a type person. Like, a, like that? Yeah. yeah, or, you know, there's different ways, I think, to do it. But the expectation will definitely change. Mm -hmm. But I think when you have a comic up there, now you have the expectation it's going to be really funny. Mm -hmm. When you have a non-funny person up there reading a prompter and it's a little bit funny... You give it a little bit more. Ah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know gotcha. what I mean? It's like a fat person dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, if they've got some coordination, you're like, oh, look yeah, at this yeah. fat piece of shit, right? Yeah. The like girl a, hits a three-pointer. You're like, bro. How'd she do it? That's awesome. She did her little step in. <laughs> <laughs> like a midget grabbing something. From <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah, it's like, good job. Like a raccoon, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's it's a tough situation to win. A, a certain style is definitely going to work for it. Like, Joe is so charming on stage. That room, they don't want you to charm them. Yeah. They don't want it. They, they're like, we do the charming. We are the likable ones. This is about a, you don't need to charm us. And Ricky was like, I'm not going to charm you. I'm going to fucking roast you all into oblivion. Yeah. And then they, then they start laughing because they're like, well, I don't want to be the one that like doesn't get the jokes. Mm -hmm. They're all still in their head about the, how they're being perceived. And then once the jokes are about them, they're going, well, if I don't laugh, I look like the person that doesn't have a good sense of humor and, and isn't willing to laugh at myself, I better start laughing. Yeah. See, but if you do laugh and you're the only person that's laughing, then it's like, wait, am I condoning something that I'm going to look crazy for? <sighs> Hollywood is a race to be second. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say about everything, with movies, with, with TV shows, but also with reacting to the comic yeah. that's on there. Mm -hmm. So I think Joe is beating himself up about it. Was it Joe's best performance? No. But maybe now... Maybe now he knows how to win that environment. Or maybe he's like, that's not how I want to win it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's not the thing that I want to do with my skill set. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's probably even harder for him seeing the reception online. Because, like, you know, most of his stuff he's playing to his fans. His mm -hmm. comedy is great. So he's like, I don't think he's probably ever had to have public. To deal with the masses like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, he's used that's to performing for, you know. 10,000, 15,000 people every single night and destroying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so that shit has to be rough. And yeah. you're in front of people you fucking admire. Like, it's also hard. I can imagine literally him talking about his mom loving Meryl Streep. You don't think that that's playing in his head? Mm. Like, there's part of it's like, holy shit, this woman is, my mother looks up to this woman so much. I've created a deity out of her. Yeah. And now I'm in this kind of awkward situation. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And then also, like, the mix. Like, this is something Cassetta pointed out. Like, the mix from the room and how we actually hear it. The structure of the room is actually important to that point. Yeah, that also. Everyone in that lower basin, it's not A-list. It's a, the A-plus list, and they get one guest to be with them. In the back second layer of – it's it's at the Beverly Hilton. It's a mix of, like – Young, younger agents, people on the team, studio executives, uh, HFPA, and their their guests. There's like a it, it just gets busier back there, so you yeah. can hear the laughs more in the back. But everyone in the front knows that they're a potential victim. But also, it's like, like <laughs> those first few jokes got a slap. Yeah. Those first few jokes got set a, a tone. Set a tone. They got a bite, and they got to let you know. Like mm -hmm. I think Ricky's first joke was something about um, 
Felicity Huffman, yeah, yeah, yeah. My license plate said something. Felicity Huffman actually made it. Felicity Huffman is an actress that's in jail mm -hmm. because of that uh, college admission scandal. Yeah. So justice. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, low key justice, but but he's setting a tone. Like first of all, I'm going at y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm. She's not here, so we can laugh a little bit. But you're. It's gonna be for you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So get ready. And. Yeah, you just gotta go immediately. Call, yeah. Calling them all pedophile, pedophiles, like right up top. Right up yeah. top. <laughs> He's like, yeah. called that. Jim Gaffigan did that. Yeah, I thought Gaffigan was, oh, was, was great. great. Yeah. So it's like, you gotta go right. I, and honestly, maybe treat it like prison. Like, go at the top dog. Who's top dog? Is it Tom Hanks? Mm. At your head. <laughs> I'm like, hey, if Tom Hanks is laughing, we all fucking do it. Or if he's there and upset, I'm not, you know, it's gonna come to you as well. Yeah. Mm. You know, if it's, uh, what's the guy that made Oppenheimer? Chris Nolan. Nolan. Christopher yeah. Nolan. Love Christopher Nolan. But that movie was <laughs> an atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just saying, I, it's like the fact that that, like, it has all the things that should make it good. It has Christopher Nolan, my favorite director ever. It has Killian Murphy, mm. one of the best actors alive. It has Robert Downey Jr., one of the other best actors alive. Like, everything should be good here. Mm -hmm. But you watch it, and you would rather be in Japan <laughs> during the explosion of those nukes than watching this movie. You really hated it that much? That seems so crazy. I was envious of the people in Nagasaki. <laughs> all right, that's, all right. I was envious <laughs> okay, of them. I don't know if that's true. I'm being honest. I'd watch, I was watching that movie, and I was like, oh, if I could only be in Nagasaki <laughs> okay. or Hiroshima right now. Can you imagine <laughs> Andrew delivering that joke right there on stage in front of I, mean, I would love it. <laughs> now here's the thing. It would have to be even it would have to be better. It'd have to be like a real good joke. I'm trying to think, like, what do you say to Nolan? God, I don't know. And these guys, I mean, it's their art. They're taking it so serious. You know, it's like yeah. imagine somebody criticizing, you know, your favorite joke yeah. that you poured a year, two years of your life into. Like it's Well, the Leo joke that Ricky did it was fucking it was great. like a similar kind of premise, but like that's the kind of thing. It's like super. Can you say sharp. the joke so that we can remind yeah, people? It's basically like uh, I forgot what movie he was. Oh, the Irishman. He's like, the Irishman was, was great. It was long though. It was pretty long. I mean, it was so long. Uh, by the time I finished it, Leon Leonardo DiCaprio's day was too old for him. Mm. This is, okay, first of all, so many things why the joke is perfect. Great delivery One, for me. Delivery is amazing. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Two, <laughs> you get rewarded as an audience member for knowing things. You're only laughing if you know that Leonardo DiCaprio stops dating him at 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as an audience member, you're like, oh, I'm smart. I know things, mm -hmm. right? Two, the joke ain't about the movie being bad. Right. The joke is about Leo and his sexual proclivities. Mm -hmm. Of course, he knows the movie's long. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he made it. So it's not offensive to him. He's like, yeah, it is long. Yeah, the only problem was Leo had to break up with his girlfriend. That's it. <laughs> yeah, which he was, was already going to do. He was going to break. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. So crazy. Has Leo ever denied that? <laughs> He's just like, yo, all y'all think that about me? I'm going to keep dating these young bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he probably likes it. you right. You, yeah. Yeah. You're right. His <laughs> reputation precedes him. Every time shit. he meets a girl, he's like, you know what this is. It yeah. is what he doesn't it have is. to explain nothing. Oh, man. And every girl that dates him is like, I'm going to be the one. Nope. I'm going to go the distance. Oh, yeah. Every girl that dates him is like, I'm going to be the one. And they feel the birthday coming up. They get extra nice. I would love to see a biopic of like the last six months of all the relationships. Because you know the girl is just going hammered, trying to keep it, keep it locked in. Yeah. I would love to see. I want to see Drive to Survive. <laughs> but it's just it's just the girls like trying to make it last in the relationship with Leo. They Cooking try, every morning. They try to change their birth certificate and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, what you mean? What you mean? Believe this. I tried another year. I told you I'm Colombian. Look, I'm actually 20. That's, That's amazing. Funny. Yeah, I want to see that, dude. That'd be beautiful. Anyway, so stay up, Joe. You're going to be all right, man. Uh, the one thing I didn't like that he did was try to use the writers as a scapegoat when the joke didn't work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, don't, yeah. don't point that out because it's like, I'm sure the writers worked hard on those shits too. And now you're going right. to be like, oh, my shit's funny, but everybody else sucks. Yeah. And I think that was like, but I'm, I, I don't know how that that's the thing. You never, feeling you, you is, never felt the sweat from a, yeah, from, from feeling like you're bombing. Yeah. So like that's, yeah. that's a, that's and a, I think it, it might've been like, I mean, a, it's I, a, I've been in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been here before. Give it 20 minutes. I was going to be like, who wrote this? Yeah. Bro? <laughs> <laughs> fucking put this outfit together. Everything sucks. But yeah, I think it's like a, that's like, okay, how can I call out what's happening in the room? Like, how can I have this yeah, honest yeah. moment? But there's probably a little defensiveness, yeah. you know, uh, going on as well. And uh, yeah, it's a high stakes moment. Bro, it's live. It's live and it's, it feels like it's in front of the world. Mm. It kinda is. I mean, nobody gives a fuck. About <laughs> it. 
D- to be <laughs> yeah, honest, no, it's, really it's probably <laughs> viewed more because of the negative reaction yeah. than if it went great. Yep. Mm. If it went great, less people would yeah. see yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. More people know about Joe Coy now. Yeah, yeah. Which so maybe maybe it works out. Before. Yeah. Maybe it works out. I mean, and then they go to the show and they're like, "Oh, this is awesome." Like it might actually like work out for them. I also think that the reaction was so negative that if you hear that first and then go see it, like, yeah. it's not close to as bad as how oh. awful Twitter made it seem. Yeah. yeah. Like Twitter made it seem like not a single human being laughed. Oh, he yeah. he went at Taylor Swift. So that was the thing. Like he had oh. one super like it wasn't I didn't, even a, that must have been later because that wasn't part it's of the It's not in the monologue, it's in like an inter, interlude in between. What do you say? He says, uh, what's the difference between the NFL and the Golden Globes? Uh, the Golden Globes has fewer cutaways to Taylor Swift. That's the joke. Now you need to come hard if you go at T Swizzy. And she just she just took a sip. Didn't didn't react, didn't laugh, they didn't give a scowl. I thought she was in on it by you're really gonna do that on no, camera. You, see, you need, that it needs the joke needs to be so biting that they have to make a decision in the moment. Am I somebody that has no sense of humor about myself? Mm-hmm. Or am I someone that can laugh about myself? Mm-hmm. So, and most times Hollywood people will go. I want people to think that I have a sense of humor about myself. So they might even fake the laugh. Mm-hmm. But if it's not biting, then they could just look at you and be like, yo, you joke bombed. And mm-hmm. everyone in the room is looking to that person to for see. confirmation. Yeah. Am I, is it okay to laugh at this one? Because yeah. I still want to be in your good graces. What do we do about, <laughs> what, will we, what, is the, what is the Taylor Swift joke? So he does that and it's not super, like he doesn't come super hard. And then as a result, all the Swifties on the internet are like, this guy, who is this guy, blah, blah. So I think that was where part of the disordinate reaction came from. I mean, yeah, the Swift joke that's like the likable fun one is playing into the we don't know who Travis Kelsey is meme that kind of started, like the TikTok challenge. like Taylor Swift's boyfriend, yada, yada. yada. Taylor Swift's boyfriend. That like that's the likable sweet one that Taylor's gonna laugh at, that Taylor fans are gonna find hilarious. Mm. And then you, you would connect that to an acting couple mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Then you connect that to like a, an acting couple or like a directing couple where we know one more than the other and then you kind of flip it. And then hey, here's something we could all laugh at and right. this is kind of cute. They do this with George fun. Clooney sometimes. Because uh, his wife is like, a, yeah, is like a human rights lawyer. Right. And so people will be like, like I, I, someone actually did a joke similar to that at like her, at his recognition for some award or something. They're like, his wife saved these people, did this, did this, did this, oh, and we're giving ma- George Clooney a lifetime achievement mm. or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, great. I remember that. And so it was like some version of that that you could tie together and make a banger joke. Yeah, perfect. And then that's a fun, likable one. And then there's one that's actually stinging that's like... Um, Mark's a better looking woman than she is. <laughs> I mean, Damn. this guy is crazy. Damn, that's stinging, bro. Got to come. It, it needs I'm not a to woman. be. It I mean, needs to be at least. Mark, you would look better. That's what I'm saying. It needs to be at least a little clever. <laughs> yeah. Can't just, oh, just be can't me. Be it can't yeah. just be me. Yeah. It can't just be brutal. Yeah. I came in with the Cat Williams right now. So, so, yeah. yeah, maybe there's something about like uh, you know how she will do an album about all her exes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then, may, and I think we probably joked around this on the show, but like. Uh, you know, something about like Taylor's already found uh, 20 different ways to rhyme CTE. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, playing yeah, yeah. off of what she's going to write about. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to bail you out, bro. I was thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the- Maybe so not that show. Nice pregnant- show the tape. Maybe pregnant not that show. Right <laughs> these fucking writers, bro. Like, that's, yeah, the problem right. is these yeah. fucking writers. <laughs> You can go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code SCHULTZ, S-C-H-U-L-Z. You're going to get 100% deposit match up to $100. Think about that, okay? You put in $100, they're matched with $100. Then you go get your prize picks on. Make sure you go to prizepicks.com, use that promo code SCHULTZ. Let's get back to the show.